Hello and welcome. In this video, we are going to take a look at how to use Oracle VM VirtualBox Manager for a solution to running operating systems other than your host operating system. Your host operating system being the operating system that you have installed on your laptop or desktop. It allows for you to, for instance, install Linux in a virtual machine for the purposes of perhaps testing an application, setting up a web server, testing networking, or just to gain some familiarity with an alternate operating system. Now, in this particular example, I am using Windows 10 64-bit as my host operating system installed on my laptop, and I'm also using Oracle VM VirtualBox Manager. Particularly, I'm using one of the 7 series VirtualBox 7.0, and what we're going to do is we're going to go through the process of setting up a VirtualBox VM I'm not going to go through all of the steps of the installation in this video. Rather, what I'm going to do is I'm going to focus on setting up the virtual machine and sort of the logic then behind the process. So to begin with, a couple of things. Uh, first of all, you want to have a folder that you can store your virtual machines in. Uh, it's one that you want to be able to easily find, um, be able to easily navigate to. And the second thing that I go ahead and recommend for folks to do is to go ahead and download the ISOs. Now, the ISOs that you will need uh, differ based on what you're trying to do. Uh, ultimately, we're going to try to use CentOS Stream 9, but just make sure that whatever ISO that you you are using, you are licensed to use. I'll provide the link to CentOS in the comments section for this video. And what we're going to do now is I'm just going to go through and talk to you about the logic behind setting up a virtual machine and essentially how do you appropriate the amount a correct amount of resources to it. So to begin with, we want to go ahead and select new. Uh, you'll see this little wizard pops up. In this case, I'm just going to call this virtual machine client-01. There's nothing magic necessarily about this, but ultimately we're going to be setting up a client and a server. So let's just go ahead and get off on the right foot with our naming convention. You'll see again, I have selected that folder that I showed you earlier. And now we have the ability to select the ISO image. Now, this is not absolutely required, but what this does is this allows for you then to skip these settings. So in other words, if I come along and I select my sent OS, then you'll notice that the wizard discovers or rather configures this to type Linux and the version then being Red Hat 64-bit. Now let's say I wanted to try another operating system. I can simply go here to other and I can simply browse to another operating system. In this case, I'll choose my Windows 10 64-bit ISO. If I select open, then again, you can see where the type and the version are changed. Now, again, you can leave this a blank and then simply go through and manually choose your operating system uh, and then ultimately choose the ISO later. But for this purposes, let's go ahead and leverage the wizard here. Um, I'm going to go ahead and select my CentOS Stream 9, uh, which then allows for us to do an unattended install that will actually set up a username and a password that you can change, as well as setting up the host name. Now, many of these things can actually be changed once you launch CentOS. So again, we're going to keep this one pretty simple. We want to focus a little more on the settings, and particularly we want to focus on things like the hardware. Now, as part of that templating, if you would, in other words, where it recognized the CentOS Stream 9, it essentially made some recommendations for a good size for your virtual machine and also for other resources associated with your virtual machine. The other thing to note is that it also makes recommendations based on the host machine. So it's important to recognize, for instance, that you're going to be sharing things like your RAM and also your processor with your virtual machine. In other words, the virtual machine guest is going to be using the same resources as your virtual machine host or your base operating system and hardware. Now, for instance, I'm gonna show you real quick on this particular computer, I have an i7, and you'll notice that I have eight logical processors. You can simply change the graph to logical processors 
to get then an idea of the resources associated with your computer. I also have about 16 gigs of RAM, which is not too bad. And you can see here that it's doing a combination of things. It's essentially making some recommendations based on CentOS, as well as the hardware on your computer. Now, I personally like to go ahead and use two CPUs. Uh, the reason for it being is because anything less than that and you end up in a situation where your virtual machine is really struggling. Now, again, if you have less CPUs, then uh, you can make it work. Um, you may also adjust this later on after you've done uh, your install and maybe you've already set up all the software you need, and then you can reduce the resources allocated to your virtual machine. So most of the things I'm showing you can be changed later on. The other thing we can do is we can adjust the amount of RAM. In this case, I'm simply leaving it at 2048 or two gigs of RAM, which again is a reasonable amount for your virtual machine. If you go down here to hard disk, then you also get the opportunity to to decide how big of a hard drive your virtual machine sees. Keep in mind now, this is what your virtual machine guest sees. The host will still have the same hard drive. In other words, nothing magic has changed about your hard drive and your computer. But remember though, that you will essentially be sharing that space then with your virtual machine. In other words, what will happen, and we'll take a look at it in just a second, your host operating system will see this as one very large file. And you can't necessarily drill into that file to see the individual files, for instance, for your guest operating system, but your guest operating system will mount then this file and to your guest, it will look as if it is just a small hard drive. Now, again, the number of hard drives you have doesn't change. Your host operating system just sees this as one large file. And again, as part of this template, it gives you a recommendation. And for this particular example, we're going to leave that alone. We're going to select the 20 gig hard drive, which should be more than enough for your exploration of CentOS. Uh, if you have more room on your hard drive, or rather you have some explicit purpose for using a virtual machine, then I would encourage you to increase that. But 20 gigs should be more than enough for this first attempt at setting up a virtual machine. The other thing that you can do is you can change the storage format, depending on if you're planning on using this virtual machine with other applications such as VMware. Um, I do not intend to do that with this particular example, so I'll leave this as a VDI disk image. And the last thing that I would recommend that you do is to go ahead and select pre-allocate to full size. This will affect the speed of your virtual machine if it in fact needs to resize. Now the flip side is of course, that if you fix the size, you're gonna have to use some sort of partition manager to grow the size of your disk. But again, what I would recommend for this first example is that you simply pre-allocate to full size. You can also mount an existing virtual hard disk file. Perhaps a colleague has given you a VDI image. All right, at this point, then we can just go ahead and select finish. This will take just a second to create the medium. Essentially what's happening is it is formatting this virtual disk image for preparation for you to install your operating system. I want to let this go ahead and finish, and then we can take a look at some of the other features that you can adjust in your virtual machine outside of your wizard. All right, so welcome back. You should now see your client 01. It should be in a powered off state. Before we power this on and start our installation wizard, I want to take just a second and go to our settings. And you can see that as long as your virtual machine is powered off, you can do some additional things such as changing the processor, the acceleration for paravisualization, virtualization rather. Um, you can change some of the features of your motherboard, the boot order. Again, things that we're not going to do immediately. Uh, you also have the ability to adjust the number of displays, video memory. Uh, you can, for instance, add another drive to your virtual machine, adjust the audio. And then one thing that we will be doing is we'll be adding additional network cards. And later in a series of videos, we're going to focus on how to utilize these shared 
folders, as well as being able to enable copy and paste. So again, while your virtual machine is off, you can do many of the same things that you would do with a physical machine. So for instance, you can add more RAM to your laptop or desktop. Uh, effectively, virtualization software like this allows you to do many of the things that you would do with a piece of hardware. In other words, if you had a Linux desktop set up at home. The significant advantage, of course, is that you can simply bring these virtual machines with you. You can turn them on and off as you need them. And what we're going to see is that you can also mess them up and then easily delete them and start back over. So at this point, we are happy with the setup our initial setup of our virtual machine. And then what I'd like to do is I'd like to go ahead and start it. Now I'm not gonna go through all of the steps for installation of CentOS in this video, but rather what I want you to see then is you can verify that you are on the right path. And so as the machine powers up, you should see, just a second, essentially a boot screen, not too terribly different than what you would see if your laptop or desktop had booted up, and you can also select then the installation medium. Now, depending on how you've chosen to set up your virtual machine, you may or may not get this prompt. In other words, you can actually go ahead and select the ISO up front, but let's say earlier in the wizard you had chosen not to. Um, doesn't matter because CentOS, excuse me, rather Oracle VirtualBox is smart enough to recognize that there is no bootable medium. And at this point, you get the opportunity again to simply select the ISO that you wish to install on your virtual drive. And so at this point, we're going to select our CentOS. We're going to go ahead and mount and retry boot. And you can see here that I'm now getting the opportunity to install CentOS. Now, I'm going to go ahead and stop this video at this point because essentially you can do this with any operating system. For instance, you could be using another flavor of Linux. You could be using your Windows uh, ISO. Uh, so again, we're going to come back to the installation of CentOS in another video. So hopefully you found this video useful. Hopefully the explanation of the purpose behind virtual machines makes sense to you. And if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, don't hesitate to reach out to me and thank you for watching.